Griffey, hopefully. So we should be good. All right, <clears throat> let me switch over. I'm gonna dive into, uh, that is the goal. All right, is everything okay? Okay, good, uh, everything is good. Oh, might be buffering a little bit, but hopefully it'll come through and everything will be fine, so. I'll go ahead and switch to this screen because I think sometimes when I switch to my screen for sharing, it actually helps out. So let's just give it a second and okay, I think it's good now. All right. Yeah, just waiting to hear the all clear, but um, the recording will be great. So I'm gonna just jump into this and uh, start doing some things, okay? Sorry, the quality is like having issues, but uh, I'm going to start with this, as you can tell, and uh, we're going to have some fun. Alrighty. Hello, Annika. Steve, what's up? Uh, Megan, I'm working in Canada. That's fantastic. Um, what color flavor, flavor coffee am I drinking? Uh, a toffee coffee, actually some toffee flavored coffee so i'm all about it all right so we're back we are back and we're ready to have some fun and um let's first cut out this image so i'm gonna do this really fast i have lots of images i have quotes that i'm gonna work with uh but you know the process i usually deal with is i grab a bunch of images and uh i'll just start sort of like removing the background because i'm gonna do a composite this will be easy enough. Remove background. Let's go to this one. Notice how it doesn't say remove background here, right? It's because this is a smart object. So you can always rasterize that or go inside of the smart object. Uh, but from there, you can go ahead and remove background uh, as I take just a couple pieces here. This one will be interesting. Hopefully we're okay with streaming. Move this over. Make sure I can see everybody else. Hello, Mohammed from West Africa. Good afternoon to you too, uh, Christine. So right in here, remove background. We're gonna do this really fast. I have some quotes and some phrases. We have a, uh, yeah, so don't rasterize it. Yeah, too late. It's fine. It's fine. There we go, like so, and uh, we have these images that we're starting to work with. But I also have various quotes. We're gonna be working with um, sort of graphic design or graphics and also uh, photography like I'm doing right now, okay? I'm gonna take this part off down here, if you don't mind. The remove background makes this mask that we then turn around and add to. So I will go ahead and Oops, there we go. Command delete on a Mac will fill with a background color. So I just filled that with black, making that transparent. Boom, there we are. All right, so let's get into um, working with graphics as well. And uh, we'll get into some of the smarter graphics we have in here, uh, such as when I go to any one of these tools, right? So we have our sort of flat graphics, if you will. These are our RAS, or excuse me, our vector graphics that we can work with. So we have a rectangle, uh, triangle, polygon, things like that. I can select polygon, drag this out from the center, right? We're gonna get this. And uh, let's go ahead and crank up the um, line thickness. So there's the line thickness. Uh, but I wanted to point out that these are live shapes. So if I, am I losing my mind? Ooh. Oh, there we go. Just make sure you have it selected. And now you can see my properties panel change to um, this polygon. So I can go from a polygon to an octagon to a whatever a 14 -agon is, right, on down the line, sort of adding as many points as I want from within Photoshop. Um, I'm thinking I actually wanna like do like more of a star. So here again, we'll take this, this is, if we roll over this, 
you can see that this is the star ratio. So we're gonna set the star ratio down. That's gonna bring in some of your points like it's doing right now. So again, we can take it from a badge to more of a star to like a burst thing. And let's drag that underneath as well. And now we have this, this lovely burst just by adjusting the star option right here, okay? Uh, notice how this end is cut off. I'm not crazy about that. Let's make it rounded. And let's make sure the corners are rounded because technically that is a, a corner. And we can see we have this nice little burst. Again, we're just kind of playing with this right now. And uh, yeah, you guys get the idea. Sounds legit. Let's pick some more colors. Actually, no, let's go ahead and remove this stroke. And uh, again, there we have our lovely burst. Bam. Okay. Hola, Varun. Varun, how you doing, man? Uh, Varun works a lot in Illustrator, and uh, I could have done the same thing in Illustrator. So it's going to be sort of mi sort of mixing sort of Illustrator with Photoshop. So if I jump into Illustrator, all these various graphics, and this is usually what I have. I try to keep this stuff as organized as possible. But now I can take some of this and say, hey, you know, decide what I want to add to uh, my current project, like this atom type symbol. So we can take that, bring it into Photoshop, paste it in. These are our options. Depending on the object, we'll determine what you're gonna select. I'm gonna select good old, uh, actually, you know what? We could do smart object or we could do shape layer. Let me do shape layer, right? Here's the shape layer and we can see it right back here, okay? Increase the size of this even larger. Maybe we will convert this guy to a smart object and shrink him down because he's kind of getting in the way. And I'm not crazy about his color either, so we'll fix that. So give it a second, shrink it down, zoop, like so. We'll make it black and white. Again, just trying to make this look a little bit better than it is now. And things are moving a little slow for me. Okay, clipping mask, we'll clip that to just affect the uh, this stone head, as you can see. And right in here, since this is actually set to um, a fill, this is what's interesting. Okay, you ready for this? This will throw you for a loop, and I'm glad everybody's watching, because you know what I pasted in is this atom like thing, right? This is what I'm pasting in, but what I actually get is this weird flower, and it's not like that atom type shape. The math is still there, okay? I don't see it anywhere, and usually what I'll do is I'll go over and use one of my selection tools. So these will manipulate the paths. So I can go to path selection or direct selection tool, but if you just click on any one of those, you can see, oh, the paths are there. Right, and then what do you do? You go up to the top, it says, hey, you know what? It kept your last used settings, which was the fill. So in this case, maybe I wanna remove that fill and we wanna add a stroke that is that color and we'll crank up the size like so. Um, yeah, and I guess you never know what you're gonna get when you paste this stuff in. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Because the math is still there. I was actually hoping that it would actually get um, sort of outline this whole line, but it is not uh, doing it. If I really want that, this is what I would do is I would paste this back in and you could paste something as, as a smart object. When I paste it in as a smart object, guess what? We have all that math. It's still a flat graphic, right? And we could obviously double click on it and change it in Illustrator. This is pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, oh yeah. Bernadette talking about uh, possibilities of working with images from stock or other websites and just work on them and just have some fun. And that's the goal. It's like, we're just gonna go ahead and have some fun, right? So anytime you paste it in the graphic, it actually gives you the page size, which again, I'm not crazy about. In Illustrator, I can go in and I can fit to artwork bounds, command zero, there it is, right? And I can go in and I could change uh, the color of this and all that good stuff. Like, you know how that works, right? Cool. 
I typically won't jump out to Illustrator if I'm just changing the color. Because if I really want to change the color, I could just throw uh, a color over the top. So we'll do a color overlay of that lovely teal color. And there we are, okay? I want to make the stroke thinner. That's when I come back in here and make it thinner, okay? This is all pretty straightforward stuff, but I want to make something cool. Uh, I always want to work with stuff I created and, and I guess it, it's, yeah, whatever you do to create just, yes, the artboard trick. Oh, Varun, you are welcome. That artboard trick, sort of snapping things just to the size of what you have selected. It's funny because it's hidden clear up here and sometimes you actually have to scroll to it, but that's what you do is you fit fit the artboard to the artwork bounds, right? Or to selected art, either one. And uh, there we have that set. Okay, so I have this graphic. I could bring in some more. I'm just gonna do some copy and paste. I'm just gonna get more stuff in there, huh? Let's, let's make it happen with some shape layers, huh? There we go. Make it happen. Shape layers. It's just pasting in the math. Give me this lovely circle, which I could just as easily make this, excuse me, make this moon. I could easily make this moon, by the way, ready for this? Option, click on that layer, zooms right to it. We can make this moon in, in Photoshop if we want to. If you ever need to do anything like that, I'm gonna do this really fast. Boom, 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 go to the ellipse. Again, these are all uh, live shapes. You know, here's one. And then what I can do is I can draw out another circle, but this time I'm gonna change this to subtract front shape. So that's what I'm gonna do. Ooh. Don't Make sure you don't have it selected, okay? Come on now. All right, well, let's just, let's just draw this out because I should be able to. Anyway, all right, let's go back. Up, up. Let's just not change this just yet. We'll put this on, yeah, we'll just put this on a new layer, right? And this is gonna make it a little bit more effective to work anyway. Cause you might have this circle. Actually, let's just go ahead and duplicate this circle. I have two ellipses, move one off to the side. I have these two, right? I wanna make a crescent move. I take this one and then what I can do is I can merge these two layers, merge shapes. So when you have two shape layers, you're gonna get this option, merge shapes. We'll select merge shapes, there it is. It combines it, that's actually not what I want. So we're learning together, huh? Let's take both of these, let's subtract front shape. Oh man, guys, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm not gonna lie. Try this one more time. Okay, here this is. There's that, we'll draw out another one. There's a second one, here's two. Select both of these. Rather than combining, we wanna subtract the front shape. All right, and uh, there is no fill on this, but if I throw a fill on there, oh, I'm on the struggle bus. Do you guys ever have that happen? You're just like, man, why is this happening to me? You just throw it away and you paste it from Illustrator. How about that? <laughs> Merge shapes doesn't affect the quality of the shapes or anything. Uh, the key thing about that is like, if you ever change any of this stuff, it just keeps it as your default. So there's been times where I'd have this set to intersect and I'm like, what is happening? It's looking very weird. Um, just keep in mind that you have these settings set up. All right. Um, yeah, there you go. Additional options like so. 
Oh, I'm so tempted to try this again. Oops. Yeah, okay, let's move on. So we have this item, we have this content pasted in. I could paste in more. But yeah, some days, folks. Trust me, I've done these demos before. Stuff should work just fine. But such is life. Right, we could see all this is made of math. These are all vectors. Because if you use your direct selection tool, notice how you can manipulate it. All right, you guys get it. I'm moving on. Oh. How is everyone? Um, there's additional tools too. We need Pathfinder. Yeah, Pathfinder would be kind of cool. That's kind of what that's doing, is it's, it's doing a Pathfinder type process, but that would be pretty cool. Shape Builder would be cool. And again, at what point is, you have to ask yourself like, at what point is, um, Photoshop trying to be too much like Illustrator. At what point are you just rebuilding Illustrator inside of Photoshop when you really have a separate app to do that? So I know for me, like if I'm creating simple shapes, yeah, I'll create them right in Photoshop. If I'm doing something more advanced, of course I'm gonna use Illustrator, right? Cause we're gonna have that level of control. Okay, uh, if you paste something in as a shape, you're gonna get the colors too. So you can just double click, change it. Oh. There we go. It's our first simple example. Uh, I want to welcome everybody. Um, yeah, I've done this before in one of my, hopefully I've done it correctly before in one of my master classes. You are exactly right. Uh, so again, this is the basics of sort of a combining graphics with uh, from within Photoshop, but we can go beyond just these shapes. So if we actually just take this, we'll just put this in a folder, right? This will be our sort of our first design. But going beyond that, we can say, hey, you know what? What does Photoshop have to offer? Well, Photoshop has a ton of shapes available as well. As you can see, I'll start scrolling down and uh, you could see all of this stuff, right? This is everything, by the way. So I can have this guy right here. We can give him a, a little speaking bubble, right? So you could take this, you can drop it right on your screen. It remembers your last settings, which is when I was just using those lovely um, teal strokes so let's just change that to white and we have it right here okay so we have our little thought bubble or excuse me our speaking bubble another way to get that same stuff is if you go to and let's just double check you have the custom shape tool so if we twirl this down for my custom shape tool these are actually the same items so whatever is easiest for you Sometimes it's easier to say if I'm going to be drawing lots of things like a leaf, we could just select that leaf and then just start drawing out, drawing out, drawing out. And you could see just kind of obviously what's happening here, right? Since I'm drawing all this stuff, it's actually putting it all on <clears throat> a new layer right on down here. Let me just try this really fast. Combine shapes. Okay, there we go. I changed this to combine shapes. It's gonna put it on that same layer. So I'll turn off these, everything else. We have this, all my leaves. It's gonna be all my leaves right here. And as I draw that out, you can see it's just adding to that one layer. Okay, so that's, that's basically what's going on there. Okay, so we have that set up. We have that thought bubble. We have all these graphics. Steve, I don't know if you have all this stuff. Uh, if I do... Yeah, Bernadette, feel free to 
post work to Discord. Also, where did all these crazy shapes come from? You might not have all of them, but actually technically you do, you just don't know it, uh, possibly. So you go to legacy shapes and more. What happens there? I've added all of these legacy shapes. So these are all the shapes that I've actually put in here because this is easier to see them visually than having them in these individual folders. So I would typically organize all this. I would take out all this stuff and put it in one folder, okay? But that's where you get all these lovely shapes, right? Um, I use the heart a lot and really some of just the basic symbols. But the cool thing is you only have to do that once because once you have this set up, once you have your gradient set up, your patterns, your swatches, uh, I encourage you to turn on preset syncing because then all these shapes and presets will travel with you. You know? They're traveling with you. All right. Hit me, baby, one more time. Earworms in full effect. So that gets synced. So when I install Photoshop on another laptop, all this content gets synced to it, including brushes, which is awesome. Okay. But let's play with a quote. We kind of understand the basics of combining graphics. I kind of think this is pretty cute. Right? So let me just change this. There we go. So we did it. Design is done. We're all done, everybody. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, some days you do the demo. Some days the demo does you. Isn't that right? Okay. So let's kind of take this to the next level and uh, focus on a project, right? When we're dealing with graphics, essentially what is text? Text art is just a bunch of graphics, if you ask me. Uh, so I have all these quotes. I actually have even more than that. Look at all these crazy quotes that I could work with, right? So I wanna kinda combine some of these. This is the one I like the most. I just really like this quote. Inspiration is for amateurs. Agree, disagree, inspiration is for amateurs. What do you think? And we are good. Hello from Russia and hello Sally from Egypt. Cool, Igor, good to have you here. Inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. All right, if you guys aren't familiar with Chuck, Close. He is an American painter that does these very large portraits. So this he's really well known for like this portrait. Look at his amazing work. Look at that. It's amazing. Talk about combining sort of graphics with photography. This is pretty darn impressive. Okay, so cool. All right. Uh, was that was that actually? Yeah. So again, Chuck Close, that's probably his most favorite one or most famous one. All right, inspirations for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. So let's get to work, shall we? Um, a lot of you might, may or you, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but as you type, you know, you'll hit enter and you, you want to confirm this, right? So you need to go to a different dialogue. You're done editing this text. To confirm this text, you could click this little button right up here. You do know that if you hit enter, right, it's just gonna give you some hard returns, but you could also just click away. So when you're in Photoshop, just click away and it will confirm or commit that text, right? So super handy. Works out great for what we're doing. And man, this canvas is huge. Let's have 
have some fun. Okay. I'm going to work with this phrase and combine it with photos and graphics. And also, if you click on another tool, it will commit that text. Okay, cool. Uh, let me click over to chat. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> What a day. Like I'm losing my voice a little bit. So sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like it, Mike. If it doesn't spark joy, delete it. I like the idea of this being hand brush or just like an entirely different font. I'm not crazy about this font. There's nothing like you mentioned. This doesn't spark joy. There's nothing fun about this. This doesn't say inspiration, right? Inspiration is like yellow and loose and bright and we're just like making things happen. That's what I picture. This text doesn't do it, right? We know it doesn't do it. Like Adobe Clean, I'm sorry, we use those for our uh, internal decks. So let's mix it up, right? We can go into a number of these. I want something kind of like really loose, personally. I actually kind of like that. I know it's very boring, but I want to play with this some more. Okay. Okay, bear with me as I just get some work done, okay? Command J to duplicate, duplicate everything. Let's go in here. You ready for this? So what did we have before? We're gonna turn this text into a graphic. We're gonna start with, um, this, the words inspire, right? I just selected it by holding down the command key and clicking. So that gives me that selection. Okay, so now that text is, that, that those shapes are selected. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to my paths. And in paths right in here, we can go ahead and take that selection and turn it into a path. So we can make that work path from selection. Boom, there it is, my lovely work path. Right from there, we can save this path. I usually save it out as I S P I R inspire, right? And there it is. Now, let's go to vector mask. Oh. Wait for it. Um, vector. 
vector mask current path. Okay, let me fill this with foreground color. So what I have now is I have this vector path and it's just masking out all of that white. But the reason I did that is because I just wanted some vector action. So I can come in and say, hey, you know, select that. I think it's gonna look cooler if I take that out, right? So again, nice and clean. We'll get rid of those points. I don't know, what do you guys think? I was gonna do something like this. Um, it might border on not being legible. So I gotta be like really careful with this, right? But that's the idea, right? Having this vector path now that I can manipulate. So this is what I'd want. Now, can you use Illustrator? Heck yeah. Right, we do the same thing right over here. Create that selection. Let's create a new layer and let's do this. Let's go, let's see if we even need that step. Yes, you do. You do need to make it a path before it can be a vector mask. So we'll come over here, we'll make our path. Uh, save path, this is gonna be Asian. And then layer, current path. There we are. Okay. Uh, how is everyone everyone doing? Inspiration, right? We're having fun with these words now, right? Uh, I'm gonna pick up the pace right now that we know, you guys know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go a little bit faster. Uh, if it's not showing up, just make sure you have, again, a, a, um, a vector tool or sub-selection tool selected. Okay, so there that is. Boom, boom. Don't worry, we're going to have some fun with this. I'm starting with just a sans serif because we're going to start melting this like one into the next and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. That's the idea. New layer. <laughs> Fill. Done. Shabam. And now we can go ahead and start deleting this. What's going on, everybody? Liquid Friday, is that what today is? What does that even mean? What does that mean? Uh, all right. Yeah, exactly, Varun, like cool cover art, like just a fun, we want this to be interesting, obviously. And what I wanna do is I wanna combine this with I want to combine it with like art elements. So we might have splashes of color, right? That might be something cool to do. Uh, I think a cool splash of color would be awesome. Keep in mind, we're still going to have our like, we're going to have art related things. So we'll have, you know, the statue, if you will, kind of what I had made earlier. There's this one as well. So this is very much like, you know, you're working on something totally, totally works. And again, back to this one. There's this one. I'll just start pulling these out. Sup. Sup, everybody. Sup. Yeah, it just makes me laugh. So this is like, yeah, I just get the, like a very much a master 
sort of master look out of this. Inspiration is for amateurs. Uh, the rest of this text is just, I'm gonna leave as text because we want it to be easy to read. There we go, inspirations for amateurs. Let's close this, give me a second. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this canvas size because we want it to be uh, 800, or excuse me, 8,000 for Instagram. Let me know if you guys have questions. Uh, you can add a skull into the project, Paul. Ah, oh, RB, what a great idea. Since RB recommended it, I think that's a great idea, huh? I mean, I totally was not gonna do that till you mentioned it, but now I'm like, oh, that's great, that's good. So we'll have our text, let's, let's clean this up. Look at this mess, by the way, right? So we could easily start to move around layers using shortcut keys, shift command, closing bracket, move that to the top. We'll have all of our photos. This is just such a huge file. Okay, this is all of our text and then backup stuff. That's what's right in there. We have our graphics. Let's bring it to life, checking the time. I have about 20 minutes. And uh, some of this stuff is just not gonna make it make the cut. All right, but let's add some fun colors. I think this this will be a blast. Um, how shall we do this? That is the question. I want to stay true to the title of this, is which is like blending flat graphics. So I want to blend flat graphics together, but I really want to like blend them. Uh, i.e. Uh, liquify or something like that. So let's just jump back into Illustrator. And go as fast as we can. Again, this is something I probably could have had made in advance, but I want a bunch of stripes basically. So I'm gonna have a bunch of stripes in here. Let's go boom, boom. Let's take these two. Oh, let's just do a step and repeat. It's gonna be much easier. Shift to drag up. Command D. Da -da 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 Select everything, maybe make it larger. All right, let's get some cool swirls. So we wanna make this even bigger. Yeah, we're gonna get some fun colors. Let's make this twice the size. And do something like that. Uh, and let's pick our colors now. Let's pick, let's go with these top colors. I want this, this, I want those. I want a purple, right? So I want, I want all these colors. I think that's a good color combo, okay? So I'll go in there, I'll select all five of those. We'll go to scripts, random swatches fill. There's all our lovely colors. I could use a different one right here. We could drop that in. We can mix it up. We need more, maybe some more greens in there. Throw some greens in and that's what I have. So again, blending these flat graphics into Photoshop, do a copy, do a paste. Pasting this as a smart object because I want to change it later on too. There we go. Here's our lovely vector smart object, right? And what we could do is we could turn around and we can liquefy this. So let's go ahead and liquefy it. Start pushing around these graphics because it's just fun, huh? What is half, what, what, oh, dip, sorry. <laughs> Select the right tool. So the forward warp tool, we could start pushing this content around. Right? And uh, get some interesting swirls and such. Okay? We could also select the bulge, right? We might want to bulge out parts and just give it some depth, like I'm doing right now. 
you get the idea. Cool. We have our fun flat graphics. And by the way, it's not like smudging anything, do you notice? Because I want to keep those crisp lines, and it's nice that they're a vector. <clears throat> there we go. Inspiration is for amateurs. Cool. Let's go ahead and save this. What is this file? Close that. This already is not bad. Right? Uh, yes, Vaporwave vibes, very much like a Paul vibe, I guess. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish I could. I've gone for two hours today total, but this already looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I need to adjust some of the, uh, the black and white. So f like for this image right here, right? So that needs to, you know, I'd need to just play with levels on that guy. Right, smart object, shortcut key. And we're well on our way to making a nice little layout. Let's increase the size 120. There we go. Open to more ideas to add to this because I still have time. Uh, needs a stroke on the text. I was thinking about that, Steve. So we could do a stroke on the text or we could paint on the background and give it some pop, right? It looks like, yeah, it does. It, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just read that, Cody Bear. It totally looks like a, this is a total skills ad. <laughs> This is totally after school Skittles, <laughs> right? Um, it would be cool to do some nice swirls kind of coming out in and out and around the text. I think that would be really fun. Okay, and we could do that as well. That would be awesome, by the way. So we, we started playing with depth. Uh, yeah, let's get, let's get messy, shall we? Uh, to Steve's point, he's like, oh, well, maybe it's hard to read. We could just brush. I would typically just brush in with, uh, I would sample the darkest color and then go darker and then just start painting in, you know, just some shading. That's a little dark, but that's what I would do just to kind of give it some depth. But we're adding this different element, but we're also mixing flat graphics with like photos and stuff like that. So I love the idea of playing with depth. So let's do that right now. Uh, drop shadow, and again, I would just like kind of add some drop shadow-ishness to it, okay, to make that pop. But let's play with this. Let's take this smart object. Let's put this on top of the text. And I'm thinking I want, I just want the red to, you know what? Let's just, we, we have to play with this. Let's do this. Okay. All right, see that? See what I'm doing there? I added a layer on top. And now we can start painting in our shadows. So again, you want a little bit of depth. We can see that kind of popping over like so. And then melting back into the background.
It's really hard to read, isn't it? Bernadette, tell me, talk to me, Bernadette. I think I, I think this inspiration is kind of tough to read. Again, that's why I started with a really clean, easy to read font. So then I get to have all the font, you know, destroying it. But this is again, a little tough to read. We can move this stuff around. We could do the same thing with this little guy. Let's drop him down. The, ooh. Let's take both of these, drop him underneath, right? And even this little guy, put him underneath too. Or not. Or not. Let's bring that back up. All right, thoughts, questions, concerns, more 3D stuff. Yeah, that's that gets to be the fun stuff, to be honest with you. Um, have these nice shadows I get to paint with, right? All that stuff, you know, honestly, I typically save for last because I'm probably gonna change it. I'm probably gonna change the shapes, right? But again, just adding that, dropping down the flow, adding that right there. Uh, help me out here. Uh, apply gradient maps maybe on the background. A gradient map. That's going to play with, if you're talking actual like gradient map right here, that's going to play with. Um, that's going to change all the colors. I don't really want to change the color, at least not that way. Um, but I love the idea. I love the idea of like making this maybe even more 3D, sure. Um, I think it needs added elements, but honestly what's gonna happen here is I'm probably gonna, you know what it needs? It needs more photography. It needs more, it needs like a paintbrush. So just kind of point this out to you guys. You can through libraries, you could search Adobe Stock by the way. So right out here, change this. Oh, what the heck? Let's search for paintbrush. Okay, how am I, what am I, what am I doing wrong here? Where is, I should be able to search, I should, there should be a drop down and I should be able to search for, say, branches on Adobe Stock. So I don't know why Adobe Stock is not there. Anyway, um, you could also use something like free stock search. I use this as well. So we'll do paint brush, brush, right? This is, this is what I'm looking for. Something like this. Let's download that. Maybe even this one. Sure. And there it is. Paint brush. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't, but that's why we try these things. Uh, I got another six to seven minutes. It's the same process. Remove background. And now we have our little paintbrush. Make that a smart object since I'm gonna start scaling it. Put that right there. And let's not forget about the rest of our text. Uh, you like it with the paintbrush? Cool. So, you know what would be really fun, actually, Michelle, is to have, um, these colors come out from that from that paintbrush. So let's let's manipulate this in such a way so I can do that. I'm going to convert this to a smart object.
It's now a vector smart object with liquify on it that's inside of another ve vector smart object. All right, so let's grab this. Mask it. You'll see this in a second. I, uh... Second. Okay, you get the idea. I would do something like that. Let's fill it. I don't know, still needs work, but you get the idea. Uh, all right, so cool. Like we could spend so much time on this. Now that I have this paintbrush, I can make it look like that's exploding colors. Here's a whole other approach to doing this is uh, you could, since you want 3D, like I could try to bend this and make it look like 3D all I want, or use something like Dimension or Adobe Substance Stager. So, uh, that's what I would actually try and say, hey, you know what? Let's jump in here. We'll create a new file. We will do this even though I have 20 things open. And I would take that same um, flat graphic of all those colors and map it to an actual like splash. So in dimension, because I know right down here, we do. We have this lovely splash right here. We have this lovely splash as well. Like all these cool splashes that we can work with. There's even this one right here. Ooh, look at that. Right, so we could give these that amazing color. We'll go to libraries. I might already have something in miscellaneous. Oh yeah, I do. So I have this, I've already made this. But let's take that, let's drop it on here. Let's see what it looks like now. I did not make this 3D object, so who's, who's gonna know how it's gonna change but it's mapping it as a decal like flattening it on there so that's one thing i can do uh also by increasing the scale so right over here we could increase the scale by 100 percent or what i can do is i can change it from a decal to a fill so just fill the whole shape with that uh that rainbow right so that's what's happening right now it fills the whole thing and uh, ultimately, I'd want this to be distorted like we did in Photoshop, so we could use Liquify and uh, apply it in here as well. So that might be awesome. So how do we do that? Let's do that really fast. Guess what? I spent all that hard work doing this. Remember making this guy? So let's go back. Making this guy. Uh, delete layer mask. You ready for this? libraries miscellaneous and this will be fun color splash drop it right in there and uh, that's going to give us more of an organic look and uh, you guys get the idea ah <sighs> yeah so that is adobe dimension and there's also adobe substance 3d stager uh, as well so uh, yeah so there's that might have to wait a second. It'll load in here. Oh, wait, fun color. Sm oh, that's interesting. So I did not apply the, uh, oh yeah. So sorry about that. Okay. Uh, rasterize layer. That's right. I la rasterize it. Let's delete layer mask. That's right. You guys get the idea. I'm only, I only have like a minute left. Oh, Rick, Rick Austenberg's work is awesome love his work and again i'm just like really into bright colors right now there it is slap it on there right change it from decal to from decal to fill right we'll do that for this one as well bam and uh yeah just making this look kind of fun 
Cody Bear, you are too kind. We're down to our last minute. But you guys get the idea. Don't you like love these colors? I mean, tell me that's not awesome. All right, boom. Drop that on there. Render that out. That's gonna render as a PSD. And uh, you're well on your way to being a, a design hero. Hey, why not? Okay, you get the idea. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, everybody, and just being good sports. Uh, you know, struggled with some things early, earlier on, but uh, I think we got to a good place, and hopefully you learned some things. I always do, even when I'm streaming, so uh, hopefully you learned something as well. So remember, inspirations for amateurs, the rest is of us just show up and get to work and things break, and it's messy, but we're still into it. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you guys. Stick around. Uh, Jason Levine's up next, doing some audio and video magic, part two of his series that he started last week. So that's what's happening. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. See ya.